Oh boy, that's life in the fast. <laughs> okay, Silicon Valley Space Center. Uh, it's a group we've got up in uh, Mountain View. It's focused on a couple of things. One, it's focused on uh, getting the word out on new space. It's focused on mentoring. It's focused on developing partnerships to reduce the barriers to entry. For new space, it's focused on building businesses, getting entrepreneurs, making things happen. This is what I see happening over the next 10 years. How can you not be excited about this? This is about new space stations. It's about laboratories that are orbit the Earth. It's about uh, going to the moon. I mean, how can this not happen over the next decade? I have a bunch of group, uh, bu oh, there's a sort of gang of uh, tough guys. There's one of them over there. Uh, this is a group that I worked with uh, in the last year or so to develop the Silicon Valley Space Center. I found it to be a very enjoyable process. It's about building teams. We did all this work at, uh, uh, at the Hacker Dojo, which is up in Mountain View, California. There's a lot of these hacker spaces around. You guys should pay attention to where there is one in your neighborhood and get the new space message out. We, what we're doing is we're developing what is called the Super Happy Space Dev House. <laughs> Trying to get these guys thinking, they're hacking away on software, you're like, no, 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 you gotta focus on new space. This is where the action is. You gotta focus on where to next. And this is where you need to be. I mean, I saw the cover of The Economist that said space is over. You gotta be kidding me, they just finished developing the ISS. I mean, what do you mean space is over? You got this entire station that you can use. And it's available. Look at how, oh, uh, this is not, well, get a new graphic artist, but this thing's big. This thing's as big as a football field. And it's built in space, it's orbiting the Earth. What an amazing concept. And it's available for us to use. And not just for microgravity stuff. I mean, here's an astronaut floating around. And you gotta figure out, your job is to figure out, what am I gonna do in microgravity? Yeah, you can float around and uh, life is good. But we gotta think a little bit deeper than that. And the other talks are saying, yeah, we need to get out there, but we need to be thinking what we're gonna do. You go to the ISS, there's a lot of complicated hardware up there. You know, you could use this. I mean, that's, uh, you know, uh, whatever, tens of millions of dollars of stuff and, uh, you know, it's a glove box. But there's also smaller experiments. And what I'm talking about is the NanoRax program. And NanoRacks allows you to build small payloads and fly them on the International Space Station. So what you want to do is you want to be thinking, what am I going to do in a CubeSat type payload? Here's how that whole thing fits together. This is a lot of hardware that sits on the side of the space station. Your little NanoRacks compartment is right there. And you can put multiple cube labs in them. I think everyone's familiar with CubeSats. CubeSats, yeah, you have to build, you have to fly in space, that's all very difficult. Why don't you just build something that's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters and fly it on the ISS? You can put a whole bunch of little experiments in it. And then the question is, what are you going to do? And that's what I would ask all of you guys out here. Here's a high school group. A high school group in San Jose built a microgravity experiment <laughs> and flew, flew it with nano racks. This is all very doable. Yeah, you can go out and explore the rest of the solar system, but let's take small steps. Let's try and build something and fly it on the ISS. And you can do multiple versions of this. There's one cube, which is one U. There's two U, three U, four U. It's a whole space that's out there available, and all you gotta do is you gotta think about it. So I'm gonna sort of leave it at that with what that could be. And what we're doing is we're thinking about how to hack this stuff. Here is uh, what I would call the MakerBot. And the MakerBot is something that does 3D printing. I don't know if you guys have been following the 3D printing industry, but isn't that amazing? What I'd like to see is that we're able to print stuff and actually fly it. And if you look here, this is the uh, MakerBot. If you go to Thingiverse, this is a library of 3D models. You can buy a little rocket. You can download the rocket and make it. But if I search for Cube Labs, there's nothing on here for Cube Labs. There's nothing on here for CubeSats. Don't, wouldn't you like to be able to print out your cube lab and send it, to, send it to the ISS and make it work? That's what we need to be thinking about and that's what we're gonna be doing at the Super Happy Space Dev House. Here are these guys, these guys just did a microgravity uh, 3D printer. I can guarantee you there's gonna be a 3D printer on the ISS at some point. What are you going to print? <laughs> You're not gonna download it from Thinkiverse. So we're gonna have a hackathon. 
over at the Silicon Valley Space Center uh, over the next month. I invite everyone to participate. We've got to be thinking about how are we going to hack the ISS? How are we going to hack this space and this availability? This is my last slide, the red paperclip. I don't know how many of you guys know this story. This is, I got a red paperclip and I'm going to trade it up for a house. I got a red paperclip and I want to have a super happy space dev on the ISS. How I'm going to do that, I have no idea.